Since Labor Day generally signifies the end of summer, we could only think of one way to give it a proper send-off. By cooking a almost three and a half pound prime porterhouse over charcoal. It's gonna be so good. And we're gonna brush it with beef tallow. That's beef fat all the way through. Your shirt is perfect for today. My shirt is perfect for today. You know what this says? En espanol? If fat means flavor, then I'm f***ing delicious. Fat. You could trim this off, but we want this because there's nothing better than a bite of the steak with the little fat on it. Oh, by the way, if you're not familiar with a porterhouse, let me show you what you're dealing with. There's a T-bone in here. Not to be confused with a T-bone steak. I'll get to that in a second. Porterhouse consists of two different steaks joined together. One is the New York. This long part right here, then the bone separates, and this side is a filet, like a filet mignon. The difference between a porterhouse and a T-bone, they both have a New York and a filet, but the T-bone comes from a little further down the bone structure, and you've got a smaller tenderloin. All right, let me put this down. It's hurting my arm. Actually, let's weigh it. Let's give ourselves an exact weight, shall we? Okay, it reads. Oh God, it is three and a half pounds. I thought it was a little less than that. Not that that's a bad thing or anything. It's good. It's just going to take a bit, but let's get it seasoned. Let's get it going. If you've been watching this channel for even a couple of minutes, you know that Max hates the towels that I use. He's screaming about them. Get them out of the shot. I don't like them. They're disgusting. Add that to my wife. We'll call her Kelly because that's her name at home getting mad at me because I use a towel for wiping the counter, for cleaning up a spill, and then wiping my face. Everybody thinks it's gross. It might be gross. It's my habit. We've come up with a solution. You ready? Brand new Sam the Cooking Guy product. We call it the thirst trap. Ready? Making a mess is fine. Looking like one isn't. That's a genius line. Max's wife, Jilly, came up with that. But here's what you get. You get a set of two towels. And two of them means that one you use for staying clean. Like this one, you could dry your hands on. You could clean a glass with. This is the one with my face. This is the one that you really give the business to. You got to spill on the floor. This is the one you use. These are microfiber. Look, we tested a ton of different materials. We finally came to the conclusion. These were the ones. And oh, by the way, it's just not microfiber. This is waffle microfiber because pancake microfiber didn't work. Okay, there is no such a thing. Just know that we went to the ends of the earth to get the right one for you. And if the amazing towels weren't enough, look what we've done for you. You open it up and there's the, there's our tag. Oops, made you clean, but it's not just for looking at it, it's for hanging. Don't you hate towels that haven't thought about this little feature? Then you got to hang like this and they look stupid. Now, now you're talking, you're hanging them like this and you're hanging them like this. There's a dark gray. There's a lighter gray. There's a contrast color on the edge. We've tried to make them as nice as we could. So you are happy using them. And Max is happy with me using them. I haven't started yet. They, in fact, they just came. So we're going to start using these. These you're going to see. I'm so happy to have them. I'm so happy not to have to use these disgusting things anymore. And if you'd like to get your very own set that will come like this, suitable for gift giving, all you have to do, shop stcg.com. They're right there. They're waiting for you. Oh, it's a good point. One of my boys just said they'll probably dry better when they're hanging like that. One of the sons of Sam. I love the fact that you can do this. So the line we use is, oops, made you cook. No, this is oops, made you clean. Look how clever that is. Okay, that's it. Shop stcg.com. Get yourself some. Get some for a friend. A messy friend. They'll be so happy you did. This is beef tallow, AKA beef fat. If you take fat that you cut off of briskets and steaks and all kinds of things and slowly cook it down, the fat renders out and then it solidifies and you get this. And yes, it looks like a Crisco, but it's better because it's got this big beef flavor to it. So we don't want to just brush it on like this. We want it melty. And to do that, we're going to take a big ass scoop of it. Do you want to tell people what that cackling is? Oh yeah, by the way, the crackling in the background is the chimney filled with charcoal getting ready to be the home for this fatty for a little bit. So you got your tallow in here and we're going to put this on the heat and warm it up, but we're going to flavor it a little bit. Two things. One will be some garlic cloves that I've just crushed. Peeled, crushed a bit, so more flavor will come out. And I'm going to throw in a piece of rosemary. So this guy now will just go on the flat top until it warms up and melts. Okay, you can see it's mostly melted, but there's enough liquid here 
for us to throw a little on the outside and season up the porterhouse. Great. There we are. Oh, silly, silly thing. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a little bit of our tallow and just paint it beautifully across. We'll get everything, at least on the side that's showing for now. And as you can imagine, the longer that the garlic sits in this melting tallow with the rosemary, the more flavor is going to come out. But I can absolutely start smelling a little of each right now. Okay, that is nice. So now we're just going to use our BFF and season all the way around. And if you think this is over seasoning, think again, look how thick this is. And don't forget, you're not having a piece sliced like this. It's going to be this way. The seasoning would just be on a little bit of an edge. All right, so now let's stand our friend up. Yes, the fat side gets it too. Don't ignore the fat. The fat needs love as much as anything else. I love what this is gonna do flavor-wise. I love it. I will leave no edge unseasoned. I will leave no edge un -BFF'd. All right, as my father would say, cook that fucking thing already. So the chimney was full. The top of the charcoal is almost all white. And now we'll dump it in mostly on one side like this, because we want to set it up for two zone cooking. So here's the problem. The problem is, is the steak is so thick, you just can't cook it over direct heat the whole time or you'll just singe the hell out of the outside. So two zone cooking set up like this, lets us sear over here. And then once you got good color all the way around, we'll move it over to this side, close the lid and let it cook sort of like it's in an oven. It's a great system. We put our other grate on top, it's fantastic. And with our friend in hand, on we go. That's what you want, you want a little sizzling. We're probably gonna go four or five minutes aside. Uh, we'll give it a 45 at some point, halfway through. Then we'll do the ends of it, the bottom, the fat, and we hit the indirect side and let her finish. Give the lid a shot and I'll be back. All right, it's been about uh, three minutes. Let's just take a look. Oh, I love the smoke. Let's take a look at what's going on down here. Beautiful. So let's do this. And close up shop again. That's gorgeous. All right, I think it's flip time. Set this down. Let the smoke clear. Oh, boy. All right, just let me bring them out a bit. Look at the bottom. <laughs> Magnificent. All right, let's give him a little bit of tallow love before we turn him. Beautiful. Turn the guy over. Like that. And a touch more tallow on top. If I can see the top. Goodness gracious. We don't want that flame. I know why it's there, and that's fine. Let's shut her down. All right, time for a quick 45. Hello in there. Beautiful. Back in a couple minutes. All right, time to address the sides and edges. Let me just pull a guy out and have a look. There's our first side, here's our second side, and here's our fat side. So it's time for the fat side. So we'll go. Right there, let it go a few minutes, give it a turn, we'll move on. And, all right, let's do a couple things. See if we can get a reading, a temp reading. That's, that's everything right there. So, New York is coming in at, what is that, 91? And our filet, 84, okay, let's do this. We're looking pretty here. Now we come over here to this side, and let's just give it a good basting all the way around. So here's the plan. I'll now babysit this a little bit. And by babysitting, I mean, are you checking on it, brushing it with some of the rosemary, garlic, beef tallow? I want to get it to about 125 degrees. The nice, medium, rare. It'll continue to rise a few degrees when we pull it off. And we'll do that. We'll let it rest. And then I'll show you the right way to slice a porterhouse like this. And then we'll eat like kings. But here's the thing. There is something in Italy called the Bistecca alla Fiorentina. Florentine steak. And it's essentially a porterhouse like that. Somewhere between two and three pounds. They're all big. They're seasoned only with olive oil and a kosher salt. So we've gone a little further than that. Cooked over charcoal and kept very rare and then sliced. So we're taking a page out of that in that we're using a big boy porterhouse. And not olive oil, but beef tallow. And it's going to be, the smell from here is amazing. And I'm going to try and keep the temperature over there around 350 degrees. I don't want to blast 350, anywhere between 325 and 350, I'll be happy. That will help it cook gently and evenly. So when we're done, it's beautiful pink. 
up, down, side, side, top, bottom, you know? Oh yeah, you know. Alrighty, we're there. So lid off, steak, gorgeous. Off, cover it up, let it rest a little bit, and we cut. And there we have it. It's rather a handsome looking little fellow, isn't it? All I need is a knife. Here's our filet side. We'll take this guy off first. I'm just gonna cut right down, follow along. And a that fly, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And now the New York, we go like this. Follow this guy like this. So now if we're gonna do this, right? Here's the New York, here's the filet. We're like this, get rid of that fat. And now we cut. It's very nice. So this is just rare, starting to become medium rare for me. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so now this guy, get a load of this guy. Oh, and this just, I mean, cuts so butterishly beautiful because this, this is the filet side. So if I want to put them back together, sort of, I'm in the New York. Look at this. You got your New York side. You got your filet side. You got your bone. And by the way, don't throw away the bone because there's all kinds of biting and eating that will go on on this. Jeez. Well, I think we just need to have a bite. So let's go right here. There's a little bit of fat in this. And uh, my favorite way, so with a little horseradish cream. So we dip, we look, and we consume. Massive gleeking, massive. Oh my God. Mm. Listen, first is charcoal right in my face, but not too much because it was only on about 40-ish minutes. If you're scared of charcoal, it's time to not be. It's just a learning curve. Get some, start using it. It really enhances. But then, a great piece of meat. This is the way to end summer, isn't it? maybe with eight of these, but then you've got, to, you look, you got a little bit of everything. Somebody doesn't like a filet because it's not so fatty, that's fine. They can eat from the New York side. Somebody likes it super tender, they can have the filet side. You got, I cut this thick, but you got a lot of eating on this at three and a half pounds. And more for me to do right now. All right, thanks for hanging out. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and give us a like and tell us what you want to see us make for you. Summer's over, like it or not. It might still be warm, but technically, summer's over. I mean, it still might be warm. Freaking 85,000 degrees here in San Diego, but it, it's the end. So celebrate the right way while you still can outside because some of you have real winter coming.